Hi team, this is Storm. She's the best, and once upon a time, I was super intimidated to pay homage to Our Lady Aurora through costume because, well, she's an actual goddess. Luckily, I got over that a couple of times, and today we're going to take a look at my most recent version of everyone's favorite weather witch, a beach day look for the later Victorian era. A couple of years ago, I needed a costume for a local outdoor Comic-Con in August, which is not my favorite scenario for spandex in these parts. My first thought was that Jim Lee X-Men pool party scene that 90s comics kids definitely remember, but working my publishing table in an actual swimsuit did not appeal to me at all. I'm more of a shield all of my skin from the deadly fireball in the sky kind of human. Coincidentally, I had just received my copy of the Victorian Dressmaker Volume 1 with plans to dip my toe into the 19th century. Like, any part of it. And of course, my mashup brain did me a solid and landed me as Storm visiting the seashore to take the waters for her prolonged health and vitality. And to keep these kids in line as necessary. Since I was on a tight deadline with no appropriate underpinnings, I wore a tank top, modern bra, and a waist cincher underneath the outfit. Few muggles understand my historical cosplays on a good day, so I knew I could get away with it for this one con. Fast forward to last month, I decided to pull Storm out of the closet for a trip to Blurred Con, another potential scorcher, cause July, and me being me, I wanted to take it a step further. Starting with Miskivies, we have combinations with a split seat for accessibility. The pattern and construction are in the Victorian Dressmaker Volume 1, and mine are made with remnant cotton, linen, and buttons from my stash. Putting them together was a straightforward process aside from the piecing, which is period, but at least I made a dent in the pink cotton scraps that have been plaguing my shelves for years. I had to make some weird darts in the front to raise them up a bit, but these undies are not made for viewing, so I didn't care. The combinations are quite comfy, and I'm very tempted to make a set for just lounging. Next comes the stockings, which are modern hosiery and definitely need replacing with a cotton or wool option the next time I do a sock shopping spree. Yes, that's a thing in this house. These are a striped fishnet knee sock from Black Milk and I have them in a few colors, but black fits the comic color scheme and works in the period. My torso support options are the 1880s Victorian corset from a red threaded trunk sale and this bathing corset based upon the Victorian Dressmaker Volume 2 outdoor and sports attire. The former was my first attempt at the era, getting a feel for how the silhouette looks without committing to the time sink and tears that I expect making my own will bring. This piece, like all of my red threaded items, is of very good quality and fits great. It looks nice under the suit, but I would never soak it in water, so the second corset is the real point of this video. We'll call her Pumpkin. This was, as usual, intended to be a mock-up, so I used a sturdy textured orange cotton, twill tape for casing, a combination of heavy-duty zip ties and plastic whalebone, green polyester bias tape, brown scrap grosgrain ribbon, and an extra-large skirt hook and bar. The wrapped straps are new for me, but they keep the corset closed, so that's fine. I do want to revisit the pattern in the future with more support at the top, where I am physically quite heavy. Again, construction was straightforward and it turned out pretty neat. Now we'll go through some accessories. 
The pocket was added to this ensemble as a convention necessity. I could have put pockets on the suit, but knowing I'd get into the hotel pool, I didn't want to forget about my valuables before jumping in. My preference for the 18th century and earlier centuries pocket style is evident, but it hides quite well under the suit top. The mask is simple but effective, and both were made from coordinating stash remnants, and I was also able to nod to the Wind Riders Avengers run with that lining. The glasses were an addition largely for functionality, but I also don't wear contacts for costuming. Since Blurred Con was both in and out of doors, I wanted to be able to shield my eyes from burning out of my skull and also from strangers. Storm's eyes are blue, so I grabbed a tinted lens for inside and a mirrored set for outside, both in oldie tiny shapes. The canvas shoes have seen better days. I picked these up for a Soul Eater cosplay many years ago, and they have a bit of wear. I was Thunder, one of Killick's twin weapons, and I just now realized how appropriate they are for this look. Anyway, I added a thread loop to the top of each shoe and threaded some vintage seam binding through it for lacing. I have great interest in making a pair of yellow canvas bathing shoes, but time is not currently on my side for that project. The parasol is from my generic collection of props, and I stuck with the off-white as a contrast to the rest of the outfit. It also makes a lovely frame to hide other people floating through the background of my photos. The 1885 suit is based off of the Victorian Dressmaker Volume 1, but there is a later suit in Volume 2. This was a blue cotton twill accented with yellow gold remnants from the stash. The pants are very easy to construct and are quite roomy. I added casing to the inside of the cuffs to cinch them in a bit because I am very short, and this costume is voluminous, and stovepipe pants are not my jam. My construction of the top was a bit fiddly with the center front opening, the yellow X details across the bust, and the sailor striping in the back. Since I was close to the end of the yellow tape that I'd made, I had to meticulously chalk, measure, and pin down the details before I got to the stitching. That's why it stops very specifically at the waistline of the bodice. I added hooks and eyes, but ended up tacking the front closed by hand to stop the edges from shifting. I really need to remove the closures and just stitch the edges together, but I haven't gotten to that yet. The belt is red polyester velvet interlined with duck canvas and lined with a woven fabric of questionable content. I machine embroidered the X logo to match Storm's uncanny uniform and stitched it to the front. This belt does not go in the water. The hat is floppy and adorable. I'm always down for ways to cover my beginner level wig work, so this one gets bobby pinned in place and off we go. Here's the look as I intended it for Blurred Con. I didn't end up wearing it, but this is a fantastic summer con option. As a note, I am always looking for other X-Men to join me on a virtual Victorian beach day. Here's the look with the privacy filter removed. You can see the top of the combinations and the bathing corset over the very comfy pants. Flip-flops are in period. And now, the water test. 
But first, for those of you trying to ignore that blinking light in your brain reminding you that black people don't swim, take a breath. Head on down to the description of this video for a couple of links. Personally, my dad was a lifeguard, a scholastic swim champion, and a diver, like in the ocean. So being able to swim at least enough to not die was a requirement for my family. I also essentially live in a suburb, so I'll be damned if I'm not going to use my backyard for an oversized kiddie pool that leaves a perfect dry patch upon which I can paint a human chessboard in the fall. Anyway, the corset does just fine in the water, doesn't impede movement, and it dried on the rack without any noticeable shrinkage fabric-wise. I will need some fit adjustments on the next one since there's a bit of a gape due to the belting system, but I look forward to that engineering challenge in the future. Thanks for hanging out!